This is a demonstration of building the 1991 version of Kermit for the CPM 8080 computers and it's being demonstrated on the original machine that Kermit was written for as a client, the first microcomputer version of Kermit, written on the Intertech Data System Superbrain. Let me give you an overview and start the build and then I'll tell you more about that. So, there are a set of files that make up Kermit on the B drive. They look like this. And then there are some on the A drive where I'm at now. There is a copy of LASM and MLOAD, which are the tool, two tools. Uh, two files from up in the assembler area need to be assembled and then uh, the object modules need to be linked together with MLOAD. I wrote a simple submit file to handle the build for me. Build.sub. And so it does a LASM, another LASM, and then the MLOAD. And that's pretty much it. That's all there is to it. So I'm going to fire this off and we'll talk more about what this really is. Submit build.sub. All right, we're going to see this hit a few, um, hit the B drive a few times, and then we'll zoom back in again and watch it. So the tools are loading off the A drive, and as it starts to assemble files, it accesses the B drive for the sources. And here goes the assemble part. So LASM is running. It's a 1981 version of LASM. And now it's starting to chug through the assembler files. Okay, so I had to prepare this build specially to run on the actual Intertech Superbrain, or it would have been the same for any dual floppy drive system. Uh, the source files by 1991, uh, this, this began in 1980, um, so by 1991 this version of Kermit, the, the source files had grown to be too big for floppy disk drives. I presume they were building on hard disk drives by then and most everybody was so they did, weren't concerned that their files grew too big to fit on dual floppy systems. So to pare the system, system back down to fit on floppy drives I stripped out the comments from all of the source code and that was done with an awk program and then the, um, the sources fit easily on one floppy disk drive which allowed me to put source on B drive and the tools on the A drive and to write the byproducts of the assembly and link system onto the A drive. So that's what's going on here. It's uh, chugging through the assembly files. So what's going on here is about two-thirds of the files assembly language files are generic to all of the variants of Kermit that run on CPM 8080 computers. Uh, so that's that's like one half of the system. When this is, phase is done it goes on to the device dependent portion of which the balance of the assembler files are comprised of and those files have code that is specific to each machine and or sets of machines and depending on the configuration uh, brings in certain pieces of code that function on the particular computer that you're trying to build on. So 
uh, we'll talk about that device dependent section when it starts building that. It's a two pass assembler process, so it builds from CPS Cur down to CPS DAT. And that's, that's the device independent portion. It's now on phase two. It's uh, one, two, three, four, five files into the second pass of the assembler. When that's done, it writes out the object module for this half of the system uh, onto the A drive. And then it goes on to the device dependent portion. So as I alluded to, Kermit was written uh, back in about 1980 uh, to function at the University of Columbia as a user, student, smart terminal, and file transfer system to talk to their DEC System 20 and IBM mainframes. They wanted the students to be able to create work on on a microcomputer and transfer the files and the results back and forth between the microcomputer and the large system and store their own data on their own drives. Take their floppy with them and bring it back next semester. And this was hugely successful for them and they used the system up, in, up until the late 90s as a primary mode of operation for the students. So I mentioned that when this is doing an assemble, uh, the the first file in the section of the system that you're assembling is referenced in the assemble command. Uh, when that file starts being assembled, all it does largely is include each one of the other files that comprise that part of the system. So you only assemble the first file in this list and that brings in via includes the rest of the files uh, into the assembly process this is uh... oh it's now in the last last file of the generic portion of kermit so now when it's done with that file it's going to start writing all the object data out out to the a drive Once it's written all the object data, then it can go on to the device dependent portion. There it goes, end of assembly. Whole process takes about 10 minutes. There is a, a uh, clock on the screen, which from the beginning time to the ending time will give you a pretty accurate idea of how long the pro build process takes. Now it's chugging through the device dependent portion that begins with CPX TYP file. Now it's that file that you go into and declare which version of Kermit for what computer you want to build Kermit for. So in there I had to tell it I wanted a super brain and I had to also tell it that I wanted to use the AUGS port. There's a 